This is my role. My eyes are on the speaker. Tell me why. Because <laughs> that looks fantastic. It's the first day of term for the class that everyone dreads, 9-2. In the past, they've brought teachers at St Edward's to their knees. Former Teacher of the Year, David Torn, is determined to turn them around. John Bailey's here to observe. OK, 9-2, listen up, please. 9-2, listen up. Thank you very much. I'd like to remind you of the two golden rules which have just been introduced, OK? For the whole school. Excuse me, young man. You need to do as you're asked first time about arguing and secondly, to listen while any teacher is talking. So what I'd like you to do, please, without talking at all, is as we go into the room, just to line up against the back wall. Thank you. In silence. You're lining them up outside, and I notice you're having the odd quiet word about shirts and ties. I think that what you're doing is you're establishing your authority really early. Sure you talk about that. And you're setting standards. Okay. When they come in the door, um, yeah. they're coming pretty close to you. They're, 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 yeah. You're, you're using some kind of um, physical presence there in that doorway as well. Your shirt's hanging out. Can you sort it out, please, before we go in? Well, first of all, you're right. It's about establishing authority. Eye contact is, is really important. Meeting and greeting the students. I think part of that is probably instinct, uh, and, and part of it is just body language, and not, not to be threatening, but to, to, to have presence, really. While I'm positioning you, I would expect none of you to be talking, and I'm, I'm physically going to show you where to sit, all right? OK, so can we have Tiffany over here, please? Stand behind your chair and put your bag on the floor. Can I then have Emily here, please? I've seen lots of teachers explaining a, 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 a seating plan to students. But I noticed that you're, that you're being an usher. You're going around um, uh, putting them in their seats. I happen to think that's enormously powerful. I think it's a really strong uh, kind of dominance trick. Um, how did you just, how and why? I could put a seating, uh, seating plan on the board, an electronic whiteboard, you could do that. But I know from experience that I'll have 10 or 12 minutes of kids saying, where am I and is that me and all this? And so that's why I avoid that. After Zoe, <coughs> can I have uh, Letitia and Sam? OK? Right, the first row, you may sit down, please. Most of it, not all of it, was alphabetical. OK. So, so the kids think I know their names straight away. I've just met them. But I'll look at who's in the fourth seat. It must be Rebecca. And I'll say, Rebecca, she thinks I know her name. Well, I've, I've just met her. You're teaching yourself their names while you're doing it as well, aren't yeah. you? Because you're doing some kind of kinesthetic thing. And Rebecca. And the second thing is that um, from day one, I want them to know who's in charge of the classroom, and it's me. I'll say this quite clearly. I, you know, took over 9-2, I volunteered for this class. Excuse me, young man. And I volunteered, actually, after hearing quite a... You know, quite, you, know you might have had a, quite a bad press about you. You don't want to teach 8-2, you don't want to do that. And I thought, no, I do not believe the students are like that. And um, today, do you know what? I'm going to liberate you. The label you were given in 8-2 is the worst class in year 8. That's the label you had, I'm going to throw it away. That's actually not true. That is not true. However, what might have been reflected was perhaps four or five personalities dominating the class. That's over now. So the rest of you who have not been getting perhaps the education you deserve, hallelujah. Because from today, you will be. And I can guarantee you that. It feels to me like you're sending a message to the rest of the class when you say it's over. Uh, it's almost as though you're saying, I know what's been going on here. Uh, and you're appealing to the, 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 the broad majority in that class who want to learn and saying, we can get on with it. What was your thinking when you were saying all that? When I said to them, first of all, I want to throw away that label, I almost want to give them a new label, which is going to be, you are a fantastic set of individuals. I do know as well that, you know, one of the most powerful influences on achievement is peer pressure. And what I want to do is say to these kids, look, it's OK to achieve. In this classroom, there will be a culture of success and you'll be able to actually, not show off, but show that success and it will be acceptable. So, it's not valid threat or anything. It was a bit like saying to these kids that have been having a stranglehold in this class, that's finished now.
you know, every time I teach a new class, I tell them a little bit about myself because I think it's important for that relationship to happen. I grew up in Hackney in the East End. And, excuse me. Thank you. And when I grew up there in the 1980s, Hackney was one of the poorest economic areas, not just in Britain, but the whole of Europe. So I had three brothers, and all of them missed out on their education. They bunked off, they got expelled, etc. and I was the youngest one there. My mum died when I was ten, and I thought to myself, I have one chance, and I'm not going to muck it up. And that chance for me was education. There, you know, I, it didn't come from a family where if I failed the exams, parents would pick me up. That didn't happen. And I grabbed onto that chance, and I went to a school called Hackney Downs School, which for me was a fantastic school. For me, it's like a religion. I am absolutely committed to education. I want to tell you that, so from day one, you know that expectations are massively high. All right? But let's just go through what you've done there. You, you've, you've, made, you've made a personal revelation um, yeah. about yourself. Um, and not everyone would no. choose to do that. Just tell me why you did that. Um, you know, going to Anthony Dan's school and having teachers believe in me and then being able to progress and get a career in education, I, I know firsthand that education changes lives. What I'm trying to do is, I want to, it sounds a bit cheesy, but I'm buying into their hearts on day one, deliberately. If they believe in my philosophy, I've got them, and I've got them forever. And the chances of them doing well at history or doing well at school are going to be far greater if, if there are teachers that are willing to actually say, look, you know, here's a bit of me. This is why I'm doing it. Yeah, and that phrase you use, it's a religion with me, that's very yeah. powerful. I would feel inspired and, yeah. uh, and I would take you very seriously if, if I was being taught by you. I'd like you to turn to the inside cover of your book. OK, I'd like to take a look at the, the rules, if you like, in the book. I think they're quite reasonable. It says, enter all history classrooms in a quiet and orderly manner. Now, I don't think you managed that outside. Congratulations, you did manage it when you come in. It wasn't perfect, but, you know, you managed it in the end. I actually want to see it perfect. Please raise your hand if you want to say something. And please remain in your seats for the entire lesson. Quite often, lessons won't be seat-based. We might have lessons where we're in the drama room or something. But if we're in an academic lesson, I would appreciate it if you remained in your seat. OK? So far, any unreasonable things? No. OK, thank you. This isn't one of these classes where we, where, where we sit down and say, that, that, let's, let's all write down on the paper what rules we think we need <laughs> to have. Number one, do you always do that with classes? Uh, number two, have you especially stronged up because of the reputation of this class? Uh, I'll, I'll answer both questions. I, the first one, I don't always do it with the class. If, I mean, with a year, I had a year 10 class uh, prior to this, and it was the first lesson, and, uh, you know, very strong year 10, and we, we, we had a quick discussion of the rules. I didn't put them in their book, and they're very mature, and we, we, got, we literally got on with the work. This class comes with a very reputation, which may or may not be true. And I don't want to spend time having negotiations about whether I'm right or wrong. And... I have to get it, as a teacher, I have to get it right for them. Now for the fun part, the fun part. Fantastic, who wants to be a detainee? What's a detainee? Uh, a detainee is someone who gets a detention. Oh. Okay. You come to the lesson and you don't bring your book, I'll make a little mark in my uh, book and it'll say B or NB for no book and it'll mean that you've forgotten your book. If the next time you come again and you forget it again, you'll get an immediate half hour detention. Is that reasonable, Luke? you really got a warning the first time. OK. So that's fair, yeah? The other thing is I actually want you guys to achieve, and I know that if you come to your book, if you come to lessons about your book, it's not the same. It's not the same. Students come along and they, they don't have the work. And uh, for all the excuses I've heard in the world, it doesn't matter. Sorry. Is it like every other two or is it no, two for the whole year? You're a great man. If you forget your book once, I'll make a note. If you forget your book twice, detention, and then detention every time after that. Wow. I do not press the reset button. Because I think if you press the reset button, <laughs> what you then do, basically, you tolerate low standards. And One of the things that you're doing is you're explaining a fairly low tolerance thing. Like when that marvellous phrase you use about, uh, if I hit the reset button, I lower my expectations. And you haven't, on this occasion, explained very much about your rewards, except you wag on your eyebrows. If homework's not been done and 
it's just been laziness or, or I haven't been told, that will be a detention. Uh, what if you've got um, like a computer <clears throat> homework and your computer ain't working so you can't print it Look, off? If there's a reasonable reason, fantastic. But you can probably only play that game once. What's going on there? If you're going to maintain relationships with students, you need to show them that you like them all the time. So even when you're dishing out punishments or sanctions, it can still be done in a humorous fashion. And I think humour is one of the most fantastic ways that you can win anybody over. OK, so I know you want me educated, and I know you're pretty tough. I might be beginning to think, this is OK, but where's the fun? After 25 minutes of tough love, it's time for some fun. Have a look at the picture on the board, and if you can see the hidden item, I would like you to put your hand up but not shout out. If you could, there's, in that picture, there's a hidden item. OK, have a little discussion. If you think you know it, say to your partner what you think it might be. OK, let's see a bit of discussion now. They definitely know it. Right, sorry, what's your name again? Stephanie. Stephanie, right. Would you be prepared to come to the front, please, and point out this hidden item? OK. Come on, give you a bit of fame. Thank you. Ooh. No. But well, fantastic. Right, for getting up and actually having the guts to get up. Right, do you think you know? OK, very quickly, come up and show me. We need to illustrate this, because this is going to change your attitude of learning, too. No, but thank you very much. Uh, one more, please, Emily. Thank you. Shh, shh, shh. No. It's a massive item. Gigantic. The house. The house. <laughs> Not a house. Look at it carefully. It's a car. There's the wheel. Shh. You can see the chassis. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. OK, right. Listen, thank you very much. Listen, thank you. Shh. Thank you. I saw that. These tasks are about really getting them to see beyond. Can they see another angle? I could have, I could have gotten the passage to write on the board. I could have something really dull. I could, but I thought, let's excite them a bit now. Let's get them interested in learning something. Um, I want to get them hooked straight away. And what, what these activities showed, which I was really heartened by, is that when they actually uh, realise the hidden pictures, there was a sense of wonder. And you were giving them some performance opportunities. There are, yeah, yeah, there are course, children coming yeah. up out of their seats. I'm, active, yeah. I'm already beginning to smell that I don't just have to sit in my butt and listen to you yeah. for the rest of the year. Yeah. OK, so, th that, that, so that's very good. This is a, a kind of low-risk exercise. Yeah, yeah. And, and everyone can join in. Yeah, tr everyone can join in. Trying is the most important thing, and, the, um, and yeah. there's, there's a, a low jeopardy if you're wrong. Yeah. You need to make sure before you leave, please, that your uniform is perfect. And when I was thinking about how the lesson went, I was trying to think what I would think um, if I was a child in your class and I left the room. And I wrote down, he's tough, but learning is fun, and he believes in me. Oh. Is that what you want me to think? That's lovely, and I do believe in them. I might not always appreciate their behaviour, but I believe in them. And, and sometimes it takes a couple of years for the kids to to see that, mm. but they'll come good in the end. <laughs>